So if two kids are running around this sidewalk path and they both start at point A, and one kid is going to actually run all the way around. They're going to start here and they're going to maybe follow, let's say, just for this problem's sake, to be exact, the exact edge of the sidewalk all the way around. And that's, let's call that kid the green kid. And then, I don't know, maybe the blue kid is going to say, I'm just going to go this way. And then cut back and go here. So we want to know, well, how much longer does the green kid have to run than the blue kid? What's the difference between these two distances? Well, let's go over the green kid first. That's the perimeter of the square. Since every side's 300, it's just 4 times 300 feet. Right? There's four sides of 300. We're running along the exact edge. This one kid has to run 1,200 feet. But the, the, the kid running the blue path, the, as I said before, the blue kid, will have to run, well, this part of the path is 300, and so is this one. But how long is this part right here? And that's what we're figuring out. Well, so, so far, the, the blue path is two 300s plus some mystery number C. Let's call it C because, well, if we have a square, that means these angles right here are right angles. And what we have in the blue path is a right triangle, where C is the hypotenuse, or the longest side. So A and B now are the same because we're in a square. So we'll call this A and this B. And we square both of them, add them up, and that'll tell us what C squared is, right? Because the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So what is A squared and B squared? Well, Think of 3 times 3, which is 9, and then, you might know this trick, the number of zeros here, since we're multiplying numbers only followed by zeros, we can just add up the number of zeros, so in both numbers, which happens to be 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 300 times 300, there are 4 zeros, and there will be 4 zeros in our answer here, because 3 times 3 is just 9, which means that they're each equal to 90,000. So 90,000 plus 90,000, that's a squared and b squared, equals c squared. And that means, of course, that c squared equals 180,000. So what do we do now? Well, you might recognize that if we took the square root of 18, that's, that's not a whole number, right? Because 5 squared equals 25, and 4 squared equals 16, and 18 is between them. Well, the same principle applies here. Um, the square root of 180,000 is irrational. So we could say that c just equals the square root of 180,000. But since we want to get a sense of the, dis the differences between the two paths, let's approximate what this number actually means, the square root of 180,000. Well, look at the square root of 18, right? We know that 20, 25 is too big, 16 is too small which means that the square root of 18 is between 5 and 4 squared. What's it going to be closer to, though? Well, 18 is 7 away from 25, but only 2 away from 16. So the square root of 18 is pretty close to, to 4. So this is going to be 4 in some decimal. So applying that same idea here, this is actually going to be fairly close to 400. Think about a 400 squared is going to be 160,000, right? So it's a, it's a little bit above this, and we could keep approximating, right, by trying numbers pretty close to 400 until we get even closer to 180,000, but we're just estimating here. So, so that works for our case. We don't need to get into further detail. But what does this mean about the blue path? So this is about 400 feet, and these two legs are 300 feet each. So the blue path is 600, right? These two lengths of 300 plus 400. So that's about 1,000 feet. So since the green path was 1,200 and the blue path was only 1,000, this path is about 200 feet shorter. And I encourage you to, to play with this number, C. Um, try to get closer to 180,000 and see what number works and see how much of a difference that makes, because here I'm just estimating. And of course, you could also write this square root in other ways. You might know this. Uh, which I go over in detail in other videos, but we can think of 180,000 uh, by breaking it up into two, two factors. 
uh, I'm going to use uh, 9 because I know that the square root 90,000, of course, times 2. And, and that's the same thing as 180,000, but 90,000 is a perfect square. That equals 300, right? The square root of 90,000 is 300. I'm not going to touch the square root of 2, it's irrational. So there, um, we see that we could write the square root of 180,000 as 300 times the square root of 2 as well. Anyway, hope you enjoyed.